Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about a new geared head and also how that applies to work that you could be doing as you advance through your real estate photography career. Now this is more of an advanced but very affordable for what you get type of tripod head and full disclosure as with other reviews that I do, companies give me product so that I can review it but as you know from my prior reviews, my reviews are not the most stellar stunning yes get this for all it's worth because I actually give a real honest review and I break it down and that's what I'm going to do in this video as well as showing other alternatives to this and how it compares but once again if you're used to using possibly you started out using maybe a ball head uh, maybe you are using another geared head like the uh, like the Benro which has been really popular because that came out into a really good price point of about $200 but then as you advance into your career and you need some something that's very consistent that will hold up over many years but also while you're composing multiple images for a particular shot doing architectural photography for instance that could be taking a long time on the tripod and you want to get it as accurate as possible that's where this beast came in so Rogetti has made something that's more affordable than what you might have seen in the past it used to be when it came to gear heads years ago either you got a ball head that was inexpensive or you went into the thousands of dollars and you got yourself a big Arca Swiss cube. This has now become more affordable. So what I want to do is I want to break it down from top to bottom. I call this the Swiss Army knife of geared heads because it's got all these various layers. So I'm going to get in close, break it down and what that cost then means, what the payload capacity is for it, how this compares then to your use at certain points in your photography career, and then what it means to use something like this compared to something else. So that's why I encourage you to even though you might look at this and go well this would be a very expensive option for me at your point in your career knowing what this can provide allows you to think about another tool in your box that you can use as your photography career starts to excel and as you then realize hey I might need to get one of these to start doing some of the work or something similar to it so anyways let's break it down the Rogetti geared head RG1 uh, geared head tripod head take a look at it from top to bottom everything that it costs how it works and my thoughts about it. So obviously when you take a look here, the entire geared head, which there's more than one piece here, falls from where the L bracket is on this camera down to the base of the tripod, but you don't necessarily need this very top piece. I'll get to what that is in a minute. That's the panning, but it's a very small type of a footprint. You can see based off this camera here, and this has a 28 millimeter F1.8 Nikon uh, Nikkor lens on it, but it has a, some bubble levels. It also has one around the side here. The most important thing here, first thing just to get this right out uh, of the bat here is that it has for panning just a little itty bitty knob right here and what that is that's a lock now it's very secure but you have to loosen that and then you would pan it to your rough adjustment to where you think you should be now if you want to fine tune that pan that's where you need this extra little piece up here at the top and this is what they call it's like their cap Z or something like that but it's a little panning uh, head I'll even this out just a little bit with that axis get to that in a second but you would do this and you'd have small little micro adjustments that then you can see up here if you were to gauge it now you don't necessarily need those degrees you would be seen through the viewfinder or something else uh, maybe through a cam ranger or something where you are but you would use this little knob as you can see it's very precise it's very solid very fine-tuned but if you want to turn this a whole lot when you're using the Benro it's a little bit different that you can just pull out one of the knurled knobs and snap it into position where here what you have to do is you have to go back around to where this panning knob was here and you have to kind of fuss with that now it's it's actually an easy thing it's not that bad but you think about how small that is in comparison to the rest of the knobs and the rest of the build here it just seems like that was kind of a missed opportunity uh, for, for them but let's talk about the other axes real quick so once again fine-tune uh, panning was up here at the top the middle knob right here there's one on either side you can see that tilts the camera back and forth in this direction 
direction. So very simple and it's very solid. I mean, I'm really turning these pretty hard to get this guy to move. Now, if you do need to make a course adjustment on this, this is where they have a clutch on the other side, which is this knob here. And you would loosen the clutch a little bit and then you can take your whole camera, you can tilt it to a position that you'd like to have. And once you get it then in that course position, then you would use these knobs on here for this axis to tilt it then and to get it fine tuned. And there are once again levels to show that where that should be. So there's that. And on the back here, kind of hard to see at the very top, this is the level that you would be using to then see how you are. Now it's a very viscous material they have in here. So uh, it might seem uh, trivial, but this is very important if you want something precise is what liquid, what fluid is being used in the bubble levels, because that will determine how uh, accurate that bubble is, not just machined into the area, but then will it bounce back in place. If something is too, uh, too gel-like, it's gelatinized too much, it'll take slow, so it's not as responsive. That's fairly responsive for what we want to see to try to get that level. Anyways, moving on to then the other axes, let me just tilt this around a little bit. You can see that there's another knob here, and that then is for tilting the camera in that direction, back and forth like that. Now, it could be back and forth, tilting the other direction uh, based on how you mount this, and I'll get to that here in just a second, but you can see how it's moving down here, and that's fine. And for the most part, you would never really have a course adjustment because uh, for this, because most of the time you want to be vertical with uh, your alignment doing a real estate photography or architectural photography, either one. But there is no course adjustment where on the bend row, you do have uh, a knurled knob to make a course adjustment on any of the axes. So that's one little downfall from it. But you can see that, okay, if I wanted to really tilt this down, let's say that I'm uh, on an upstairs or someplace I want to look up a staircase or something else, then I'm kind of limited. And also it only goes down that far. That's about as far as you're going to get it. So you'd have to play some games with mounting this, doing something else. If you're going to do some trick shots, you know, to be able to uh, look upwards and whatnot, I might be able to do something here with you with your L bracket or be able to turn your camera in another direction and then be able to use, you know, the clutch to uh, use this axis instead with your camera uh, pointing the other way. But anyways, for that axis though it is uh, limited but it's extremely extremely precise so this is one of those things where using a tool like this comes in handy where you're setting it up and you're going to be doing uh, something a shot that could take 10 15 minutes of doing a lot of light painting or uh, moving uh, your lights around in some other configuration getting a lot of different exposures also helps uh, for aligning that up if you're doing a twilight or for instance if you're doing time-lapse photography um, video, I should say, then uh, this keeps it in place very well. Now let's get in a little closer and take a look at how this thing is assembled. And then I'll also get into the cost from top to bottom, what's all involved here. So taking the camera off here, we can see then the, uh, I call it three layers of what they have here. And this top layer is this extra pano head. Now with this whole thing from top to bottom, if you have all the layers, then you're talking about a thousand dollars US. Now that's a lot cheaper though than what you might find for something comparable. The Arca Swiss with this type of configuration will run you over $2,000. It's about half price in that. Although there are some Arca Swiss Arca heads that run about $1,500. Once again, if you take a look at the Benro head, the Benro head only runs $200, but it's not a precision uh, geared head for doing the advanced type of work. Get you through a lot of stuff. I use the Benro quite a bit. Um, it's probably on my uh, tripod probably 95% of the time, and very rarely would I need to use something else. So anyways, this is it from top to bottom, all the various layers. So I've turned this around so we can see I can take off this top panning head which I've just unscrew that like anything else you'd expect out of an Arca Swiss type of clamp, and that comes out. Now we're talking about an $800 head. Now, once again, you've got all the axis controls because you've got that little knob, you know, for unlocking and panning, so you can pan just fine, and then you can use this knob over here, and that would get you that axis, and then you've got the one on the side, which gets you then that axis for doing the verticals. Now, here's something, though, that's a little bit interesting. I want to change focus. I want to zoom in a lot closer and show how the various mounting options uh, lie within these type of heads and also something that's very unique to keep this even more precise and provide safety. 
So what I've done is I've just tilted this forward. I just used the clutch here. It was up in this position. I just uh, loosened the clutch and moved it down here so that we can take a closer look at what we're up against for mounting. So you can also remove this particular layer here. This is for mounting your camera and that would just be done. I'm loosening this knob here, but you notice it's not falling out. Um, let me loosen that up the rest of the way and I can move that out. And now you could just mount your camera there, but notice this is allowing us to mount it in the other direction. And they have these dual arrows on here showing you can mount your camera in those two directions, which is very useful. So you can have your camera mounted a certain way, which you feel more comfortable with than using the various knobs. So you could, of course, this just comes with the $800 uh, head here, but you could just use this and then you have a very small uh, footprint of a head here, which would just look like this. But that means that your camera will be facing then this way if you have your plate uh, going that way, your L bracket or whatever your mounting plate is. And of course, they have a square arc of Swiss that you can put on the, uh, the base of your camera as well um, if you're not using an L bracket. If you're doing architectural photography, more than likely you are having an L bracket. And of course, Rogetti has their own L bracket as well. Anyways, moving on here, let's move this back down here so I can get in closer and show you the reason that it's nice to have this in this particular design. You notice that they have these notches. It might be hard to see here, but there's a little dowel pin that's in there. And what that allows you to do is when you get this in there, you'll hear it click. I'll get my microphone close here. You can hear it snap in. So it actually snaps into place so that you know you are exactly centered on this plate. Once again, it just slips in and boom it locks into place. Then once you have that, you can tighten things up. So this is a big benefit that I found with this particular design. Uh, it goes far beyond the Benro where yeah, that could be anywhere all over the place. When you're looking for precision, this is it. You can see even this has slots on the top there. So if we grab, for instance, the pano head and we wanted to slide that into the pano head also has the same dowel pin designed where then if you were to put this in here, you would then have it snap into place in those dowel pins. You can hear it just snap right into place. And then you could go ahead and tighten that uh, in there. So you have a very precise setup. You don't have to worry about these then moving all over the place and worried about them slipping out. Because when you look at it, when you have three layers up here, you wonder, well, okay, I've got all these knobs now going on. Could something slip out of there? Well, that is a possibility. But when you have these dowel pin configurations like Rogetti has put in here, then that makes that less likely to happen. So I really did like this portion of that design. I felt more secure uh, putting a higher end camera in here knowing that it would lock in place with those dowel pins. So overall, it is a very solid uh, piece of gear. One problem I had that I really felt uncomfortable with, uh, now I've got very slender hands. I'm only five foot nine and I don't weigh that much. So I've got very skinny fingers and it's not that hard for me to move a lot of these knobs. But you can see that they are quite small. Now that's something that's quite common on some of these higher end uh, geared heads because they have to make room. And especially if you're gonna have a small footprint like this particular head is, then you need to have, obviously for a small footprint, you need to have small knobs on there. Now they are knurled, so they are easy to use, and they do have these little red caps, which make it easier to see as you're moving around real fast, and you don't accidentally, for instance, loosen up one of the mounting knobs, which are never red. So they, the various mounting knobs for the various layers are silver, so that's you know easy to identify. But that was one of the little nits that, uh, that got me was that. Also felt there was just a loss opportunity with this small little panning thing, I felt that why not just put, for instance, a worm gear like they have here, which is behind all these, why not just put a worm gear in here with another knurled knob? So that didn't quite make sense to me. Instead, I have to have this other complete plate up here, $200 added, another link in the chain of things that I have to tighten up and make sure are secured to be able to then do my fine-tuned panning motion. So this still wouldn't be as bad for fine tune if I had something that was coarse for my coarse adjustments that wasn't such a tiny little thing. So small knit, would it stop me from buying it? Well, absolutely not. I mean, I could definitely get by with that. Now, I haven't used this for a year, five years, 10 years to see how long it would last, but I can tell just by the machining quality of this, this is an extremely solid, well-built piece of equipment. Once again, though, this is something that you would use uh, not just for your everyday M 
MLS uh, type of shoots for real estate, this is when you start advancing through your career. You need something that's very, very solid. And when you start pricing the Arca Swiss and some of the higher end then uh, geared head uh, uh, heads that you're going to be using on your tripod, this would definitely be a, uh, a definite contender for that. So I do have a link, once again, down in the description for the video uh, for this particular head. So you can go check it out on Road Jetty's site. It's the uh, RG1. So you can see for yourself uh, how this would uh, work for you, all the various specs on it. And once again, if you're going to get all in from top to bottom with the pano head, as it's shown, it's about $1,000. Once you take this off, the pano head off the top, then you're taking a look at about $800. Definitely a very good price compared to what the, is out there on the market for similar type of heads. So by comparison, this is something you've seen me do the review on. I've got a link to the review as well as links to the Rogetti head down in the description for the video. But the Benro head becoming at only $200 is uh, it's a fairly good head. It's got these uh, you know standard adjustments like I've shown before. It's got the knurled adjustments. You do that and you can make coarse adjustments moving it uh, any way that you want. But at about $200, it's an okay head. It does quite a bit, but it's not going to give you the precise movements uh, that you would get out of the Rogetti. When you take a look at them side by side and you take a look at the size difference you can see the Rogetti has definitely got a smaller type of footprint to it so uh, it's but it's also a definitely a heavier uh, head here the Rogetti is but the Benro is just something that it can get a lot of work done doing real estate photography it has all the big knobs here you don't have to worry about the small little knobs um, you know like on the Rogetti but it's not going to give you the precise movements that you're looking at also a big difference here is that when you're looking at using a Benro head, you're looking at a maximum payload limit of 13 pounds, where on the Rogetti, you're looking at 22 pounds. It's almost uh, half as uh, the payload on the Benro. So the Rogetti taking almost twice as much payload on there means you can put a lot of gear on top of it. So uh, you've got a very heavy lens. You've got uh, some equipment you're using with monitors and whatnot. You don't have to worry about what that payload's going to be on the Benro. It's just not going to be able to do as much also, what happens a lot of times is when you have heads like this, like the Benro, and you start approaching their payload limit, you can start getting some funky results with, hey, wait a minute, this uh, axis isn't quite you know, as sharp as it should be. So sometimes those things will happen with these uh, lower priced geared heads, where once again, you get into the pro arena, you're doing architectural photography, then that's where you're going to be looking at something more along the lines of the Rogetti or Arca Swiss Cube. And of course, just comparing that real quick to a ball head, world of difference, a different type of application. This gives you a lot more control. This is a Surui. It's a very well-built ball head. But you know, once you start loosening that up and what you're going to do with it, then you start getting a, it can pan very well, but you loosen up its clutch and then you uh, start moving that ball all over the place. So you start lining up your verticals. Hey, that looks good. Your horizontals off. You know, it can stay in place very well. Yeah, there is a bubble level, but how useful really is that? That. Where this comes in handy is where you need to quickly change stuff and you're holding your camera and you can loosen that clutch a lot to where this thing just flops around. But you tighten the clutch just a little bit to where you get just some slight movements out of it and you can get so a really good ball head can get that but it's not going to compare once again to the geared head. So in the old days, yes, before the Benro came out, which was an inexpensive geared head, there wasn't much of an option between the price difference of a $100 and $150 good ball head compared to a multi thousand uh, dollar type of uh, geared head like the Arca Swiss. Well now there's competitors in between where yes you do have the Benro which is just a little bit more than a ball head and it can get you then some fairly good gear head uh, motions and some accuracy but then when you get into the big daddy stuff you get into the Arca Swiss or now the Rogetti uh, line that's when you get the real precision stuff at a little bit of a higher cost. So to summarize this is really an advanced a geared head. If you're just starting out doing real estate photography, you may not find this useful yet. You may want to do something more budget friendly, for instance, like the Benro head. I really would stay away from ball heads now that the Benro has come out. Years past, I used to recommend that for starting out, but nowadays that Benro is lower priced. But you're not going to get a long lasting, super strong, exceptionally accurate gearhead like you would if 
if you got like the Rogetti, which competes in that arena for the Arca Swiss Cubes, but at a much lower price point. So if once you're reaching that point in your career and you're looking at the Arca Swiss Cube or something that's gonna be very comparable for a highly accurate geared tripod head, I'd really give the Rogetti a strong consideration. Very highly recommended for that specific arena of architectural advanced type of real estate photography. Is this uh, something that you could start out with? Absolutely, definitely so. But I would wait until that point in your career where you feel that that would be the point where it's necessary. It's not necessarily fast for production. For instance, some of the things with the panning on that panning little lever um, just didn't make it to where for a run and gun type of stuff, standard MLS shoots, I would find this to be the most useful. But it is a highly recommended geared tripod head by me for that particular type of work. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this information as you advance through your photography career. If you did like this video and you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.